everyone welcome to home school so uh, in the previous video we have seen what were the or uh, what was the introduction to the advent of the europeans to the india as well as which was the main city which was involved in the trade that is the constantinople as well as the fall of the constantinople the new sea route to the india and who discovered the sea route isn't it so we were ready with everything that is route the commodities everything was ready so in the today's topic we were supposed to see who were those european traders who entered the india okay or which were the european trade companies which came to india right so uh, after the portuguese uh, when they discovered that is when vasco da gama discovered the new sea route so portuguese at least started coming to the india and started started the trade actually and they were the only people who came to india by that route and almost for a century they used it fine but later on after or after the portuguese it was the french dutch as well as english also took that particular route and started coming to india for the trade purpose so the entry of the uh, europeans that is entry of the portuguese dutch french as well as english not only changed the history of the india it also changed the history of the european countries all right so india at least so we will see it in the later whether india was really profited or whether it was affected by the entry of these european rulers to the india all right so the first european company which we are going to study is the portuguese first one is portuguese so portuguese we know that it was the vasco da gama who discovered and he was a portugal sailor vasco da gama was a portugal sailor all right so they were first to arrive they were first european company or the portugal trading company was the first company which arrived and they were last to leave india okay they were the first to traders who came to india as well as they were the last to traders to leave the india by sea route by sea route this is very important there were also arab merchants who were trading between the asia and europe but they had not used the sea route so the first to arrive and last to leave india by sea route were the portuguese okay then after vasco da gama one more person that is francisco de almeida after vasco da gama one more person that is francisco de almeida he came to india as the viceroy of the portuguese we will write his name francisco de almeida you have to remember all these names francisco de almeida all right so he came to india as the viceroy of the portuguese viceroy of portuguese to india portuguese to india and this person came up with one beautiful policy which was called as blue water policy right the policy which was given by the francisco de almeida was blue water policy what does this blue water policy means all right this policy firstly we'll see why this policy came up so this policy was mainly to gain the supremacy over the sea so one thing you have to remember here is portuguese were majorly interested in the sea routes or the a uh, sea wealth rather than the land routes or the land wealth actually so to gain the supremacy over the sea as well as the sea route the portuguese or this particular person that is francisco de almeida he came up with the policy called as the blue water policy so what does that blue water policy means it is 
it is to capture the naval or to capture the coastal areas of the india all right to capture the coastal areas of the india as well as to have a control over the naval base so at that particular time in the history or in the past navy was one of the important part of the military in any country so what happened portuguese had an idea that if we capture the coastal areas and gain the supremacy or control over the navy then definitely we can rule the country all right so with that particular idea they came up with this blue water policy and it was given by francisco de almeida after francisco de almeida it was one more person that is alfonso de albuquerque okay we will write it alfonso d these uh, these three names that is vasco da gama and then francisco de almeida and alfonso de albuquerque as well as you have to remember the spellings also here no spelling mistakes okay q u e r q u e albuquerque okay so alfonso de albuquerque francisco de almeida and vasco da gama so these three people are very important in case of the portuguese all right so alfonso was actually called as the real founder of the portuguese empire in india he is called as real founder of portuguese real founder of portuguese empire in india okay so so this and what he did was that is alfonso as soon as he came to india so he waged a war against the sultan of bijapur in the year 1510 right in the year 1510 in the year 1510 alfonso 1510 alfonso waged a war he waged a war he waged a war on or against the sultan of bijapur against sultan of bijapur bijapur and one goa all right he won goa so what happened so when they won goa or when they captured the goa uh, after the war against the sultan of bijapur so they found a supremacy or they got a monopoly over the indian trade and especially like for centuries all right till english and french they established their base in india it was portuguese who actually ruled or who had the supremacy or monopoly over the indian trade all right so alfonso the first first war which was waged was actually by the alfonso de albuquerque and he waged the war in the 1510 against the sultan of bijapur and he captured goa from them so goa became the administrative center for the portuguese so that was the main place where all the trade activities was going on or all the trade decisions were going on so uh, after they captured the goa they almost had got the supremacy or they retained the monopoly over the indian trade for almost a century till english and the uh, french people came and established their base all right so the first company or the first european trade company which came and ruled india war was portuguese all right after portuguese it was dutch who entered the india so next we'll see the dutch now dutch were actually from holland or netherlands they were from holland or netherlands this was the second european trade company all right so as soon as they entered india they established one united east india company in the year 1602 in the year 1602 dutch people they established one united east india company united 
East India Company. So why they established this company? This was mainly for the trade purpose. All right, they had come for the trade and commerce to India, isn't it? So they had established this United East India Company in the year 1600. Two. All right. So why exactly is this was mainly to do the business with the eastern countries. All right. This was mainly to do the business with the eastern countries like India. Okay. So we'll write it here. Mainly, mainly to, mainly to do business with Eastern countries with Eastern countries like India. All right. So along with the India, the Dutch was also interested in other countries like Java, Sumatra and Indonesia. Java, Sumatra and Indonesia and Indonesia. So what they did is they started building the warehouses and they built very important warehouses. What is a warehouse? Warehouse is to store anything. These are the huge buildings which are being protected by huge walls and they built they built the warehouses to store their commodities which they used to trade to the European countries or which they wanted to send to the European countries. So they have to stock it, isn't it? For the stocking or for storing those commodities, Dutch people started building the warehouses and they built the warehouses in Surat in very very important place is the Surat. After the Surat, they built it in the Broch, Kambe, Cochin. Broch, Kambe, Cochin. We will locate all these places or at least the important places on the map also. So firstly, we'll write it. Okay. Surat, Broch, Kambe, Cochin and then Nagapattinam, Masoli Pattinam and then Chinasura. Nagapattinam, Masoli Pattinam, Pattinam and Chinasura. So what you have to uh, observe here is they wanted to establish their monopoly or they wanted to establish their power mainly in the southern and central India, majorly in the southern part of India. That was because it was rich with the water resources. That was uh, the southern part of the India is all, uh, it is all surrounded by the water on the three, on, on complete southern part of the India has been covered by the water only, isn't it? So we don't have the land surrounding the southern part of India. We have water sur sur surrounding the southern part of India. So that was mainly concentrated by these Dutch people also. Okay, even the Portuguese had eye on the water sources as well as the Dutch people. Fine. So we will now locate these uh, places on the map of the India, where exactly they fall. I'm just drawing the rough map here. Okay. So, so firstly, where is the Surat? Surat and Broch, both are here only. We have, we will locate the important places so that it is very easy for you guys to remember. Alright, Surat and then Broch. Fine. So firstly, Surat and Broch is over. So Kambe is also on the coastal area only. And then the next important place is the Cochin. So where exactly is the Cochin? Many, many of you have visited Cochin also, I guess. Alright, so we have Cochin here. And then where is Nagapattinam and Masulipattinam? Can anyone guess on which coast the Nagapattinam may fall? Whether it is on the eastern coast or the or on the western coast? So we have Nagapattinam here. 
and we have Masuli Patinam a bit above the Nagapatinam. Okay, so this is Nagapatinam. This is Masauli Patinam. Alright, so Nagapatinam and Masauli Patinam. So these were a few important places or the warehouses which actually were built by the Dutch people. Fine. So once they built the warehouses and they started their trade actually, now the trade was in full fledged and this broke the monopoly of the Portuguese. So almost for a century we had seen that Portuguese were ruling India. They had a complete supremacy or they had a monopoly on the trade of the India. So once the Dutch people started building their warehouses, they started their business in a fledged manner, in a full fledged manner and hence they broke the monopoly of the Portuguese. But somehow they could not sustain for a longer duration. I mean the Dutch people could not sustain for a longer duration. That was because very soon French and English companies came up and uh, they started their trade and due to the competition which could not be faced by the Dutch people, they had to take back their companies or they had to leave India and at that time what they did is they only confined themselves to the spice island of the Indonesia. We will write it. So what happened? After the warehouses they gained monopoly. So warehouses in the Surat, Proch, Kambe, Kochi, Nagapattinam and Masolapattinam and as well as Chinsura were built and they gained or they broke and they broke monopoly and they broke monopoly of Portuguese. They broke monopoly of Portuguese trade in India. In India. So later uh, when the French and English people came, they could not face the competition of the French and English and hence they had to take back their companies and they were only confined to or they only concentrated, they left the India and they started concentrating majorly on the spice island of the Indonesia. The spice island of Indonesia. Spice island of Indonesia. See, so even Dutch people also wanted the spices, uh, silk, cotton and everything, isn't it? So, since they wanted spices and now they could not face the competition which was given by the French and the English people. So, they had to shift to some other place and that other place was the Spice Island of the Indonesia. So, we have seen two, two European trading companies. The first one was the Portuguese and the second one is the Dutch. Next one is the English people now. Alright, we will take up the English now. English came in the year 1600. Alright, so next one is the English that is Britishers. Alright, so these English people they came in the year 1600. So what happened is on 31st December 1600, alright, on 31st December 1600, the Queen of the England, that is Queen Elizabeth, Queen, Queen Elizabeth, she issued one royal charter, she issued a royal charter to the English people to establish the East India Company and to trade with the eastern countries of eastern countries for 15 years. All right. In the year 1600, that is on 31st December 1600, Queen Elizabeth, she issued a 
royal charter charter is anything that is uh, which is having a set of rules or agreements we call it as a charter all right and see we are calling it as a royal charter because she is the queen all right she, that is a royal kingdom or royal dynasty of the england hence we call it as a royal charter which is being uh, signed or issued by queen elizabeth and what was the charter about that is mainly to establish the east india company to establish to establish east india company east india company all right so why did they establish the east india company that was majorly to trade with the eastern countries for 15 years okay east india company to trade with to trade with eastern countries to trade with eastern countries for 15 years all right so the royal charter or the agreement which the queen uh, gave for the first time was only for 15 years but anyhow later it was again extended but somehow though it was signed in the year 1600 but actually all right actually the trade started in the year 1613 fine the actual trade or uh, the trade actually started actually started in 1613 fine then so what happened is it was uh, the moguls were ruling india at that time or mogul had a monopoly in the almost in the major part of the india at that time and jahangir was the king all right so jahangir what he did he gave the permission to build the warehouse or a factory at the surat all right so first permission for these english people was given by the king jahangir jahangir he gave the permission to build a warehouse or a factory warehouse or factory where it was built it was built at surat it was built at surat so 1613 they started the trade and later on the jahangir he gave the permission to build a warehouse or a factory at the surat then in the year 1617 right so 1617 what happens one more person comes from english or england that is sir thomas row in 1617 sir thomas row right so he came to the court of jahangir and this person had come from the court of the james 1 king all right sir thomas row he came from came from court of court of king king james 1 as royal ambassador all right as royal ambassador to court of jahangir to the court of jahangir from where he had come he had come from the court of james 1 and he came to the court of jahangir so why what was the reason for his visit all right so this was mainly to seek the permission or to have a relationship between the king of uh, king or the james one king and the jahangir king so that they have a proper relationship and he gives the permission to build much more warehouses or the factories at different places where the mogal rule was there all right so after thomas row visited the 
uh, as a royal ambassador he visited the court of jahangir then he sought the permission or he took the permission from jahangir to establish the factories or the warehouses at different places of the mogal empire wherever the mogal rule were there so among those places they chose some places like agra ahmedabad and broch and they built the warehouses in those places right warehouses warehouses were built at agra ahmedabad and broch agra ahmedabad and broch so the reason for the thomas rose visit was to seek the permission to build the warehouses in the other places of the mogal rule all right later on in the year 1639 in the year 1639 that was after they had built the warehouses later on in the 1639 Uh, the madras was captured by the english from the king of chandragiri okay at that time madras was uh, ruled by king of chandragiri 1639 madras was captured or madras was taken was taken by king of by king of chandragiri right it was taken by king of chandragiri and one important fort was built there that is the saint george fort okay and saint george fort was built there right the saint george fort was built there so after the capture of the madras one more king that is the charles ii all right charles ii uh, that is the prince of the england so what he did is he gave the mumbai on the annual rent all right to the east india company what charles ii did was he had a talks with the indian kings and he took the mumbai and that mumbai was given by charles ii to the east india company on the annual rent of 10 pounds okay we'll write it charles ii that is the prince of england charles ii prince of england prince of england so he gave the mumbai he gave mumbai on rent on mumbai on rent of 10 pounds of 10 pounds to east india company to east india company so now what happened even mumbai came under the madras or had already come under the english people uh, that was they had captured it from the king of chandragiri isn't it so later on charles to had a talk talk with the indian kings and he got the mumbai and he uh gave the mumbai on the annual rent that is per year east india company is supposed to pay 10 pounds to the king for utilizing the mumbai for their trade all right so after the mumbai so firstly madras came uh, in their hands and then the mumbai came in their hands then what happened in the year 1690 english people they purchased three cities or three places from india that is in the year 1690 okay three places were purchased three places were purchased so which were those places so the places were southanti and calicutta and then govindapuram see again i am repeating the spellings are very very important S U T A N A U T I 
N A U T I. So Tanti and then Calicutta. K A L I K A T A. If it is not properly visible on the board, I'm I'm repeating. Hence I'm repeating the spellings again. K A L I K A T A. K A L I K A T A. Calicutta and then Govindapuram. G O V I N D A P U. R A M Govindapuram. So these three places was were purchased by English and they are present. All these three places are present on the bank of the Hugli River. On banks of Hugli River. On the banks of Hugli River. Alright. So once they purchased these three places, now a fort, very very famous fort, that is the Fort William. All right, they built Fort William around these three places. So, three three person three places were purchased by English. That is, County Calicutta and Govindapuram on the banks of the Hooghly River, and they built and they built Fort William, and they built. Fort Williams and the city of Calcutta, all right, the present city Calcutta that is being developed or the, the city of Calcutta is built around these three places or the Fort William, okay. Remember the present city of Calcutta is built around the Fort William. After this, in the 17th century, so uh, Bombay had come to their hands, Madras had come to their hands as well as after the purchase of these three places that is the Satanti, Calcutta and Govindapuram, the Calcutta city started uh, developing around the Fort William and now uh, the Calcutta is also in their hands. So Bombay, Madras, Calcutta, all the three places were in their hands and they started developing these three places as the centers of their presidencies. Okay, in the 17th century, in the 17th century, Bombay, now we call it as Mumbai, but at that time it was called as Bombay. Alright, so Bombay, then the Madras and Calcutta. Madras and Calcutta. Calcutta were established or they were made as the centers of their presidency were made as, they were made as centers, centers of their presidencies, right? They were made as the centers of their presidencies. And later in the 18th century, in the later part of the 18th century, Calcutta was made as their capital. Calcutta was made as their, was made their capital. It was made their capital. And then after uh, they made their capital, they got to establish a one, one strong base in the India because three important cities of that time, that is Bombay, Madras, Madras is today's Chennai, all right. Bombay, Madras and Calcutta, these were three very big cities of India at that time. All three were under their hand and Calcutta was made their capital. And later on, they started implementing their own civil and criminal procedures, procedure, procedure courts in that area. That is where all the English rule was there in those areas. They had left out the remaining places. Okay. In the remaining places, they didn't have their own civil and criminal procedure courts, but wherever they had ruling. So in those areas, they implemented, they implemented they implemented their own civil and criminal, their own civil and criminal procedure codes and procedure codes in their areas. All right. In their areas.
fine so this was a introduction to the advent of english people all right or the establishment of the east india company this is how they actually entered the india and they developed a strong base in india so after this after they dis, uh, they declared the calcutta as their capital later on many many uh, things had happened many developments came up in the english people so all those developments we will see later all right then the next we have seen the portuguese dutch and english So the fourth European trade company which came to India was the French, and this was the uh, last one. Or among the four important trading companies which came to India, many many countries have visited India. Among them, four are important. That is Portuguese, Dutch, English, and French. Okay, so we'll see the French now. French came to India in the year sixteen sixty four. So these people had started the French East India Company as a government company in the year sixteen sixty four. So they came to India in the year sixteen sixty four and they established the French French East India Company. All right, French East India Company. You have to remember. United East India Company, French East India Company, and only East India Company was for the English. Okay, so you should be able to remember these names. So the French East India Company was established as a government company in the year sixteen sixty four. Then in the year sixteen sixty eight, in the year sixteen sixty eight, Surat. uh or the first factory of these french people was uh built in the surat okay that was in the year 1668 the first factory first factory or again the warehouse was built in the surat first factory in surat was built then later three more or uh, few more cities were also taken and few more uh, fair houses or factories were also built and the cities were again machli patnam and chandranagor mahe karikal and then kasim bazar all right so uh, these are few important places we will write and again i am repeating the uh, spellings are very very important all right the places are or later on the machli patnam chandranagor mahe karikal kasim bazar and the balasore so these were also been taken by the french people so we'll write the names machli patnam all right and then the uh, karikal mahe and kasim bazar कारिकल माहे कासिम बाजार एंड देन चंद्रनागोर चंद्र नागोर एंड देन बालासोर राइट so these are a few places which came in the hands of the french people after the surat and they developed their warehouses or factories in these places all right then in the year 1674 next okay in the year 1674 one more place that is valikandapuram all right it is valikandapuram vali kanda puram so this was captured uh, uh, this was taken by a muslim official by the french valikandapuram was taken by was taken by muslim official official and later all right later this valikandapuram was called as the puducherry later it was called 
it was called puducherry and today we call the puducherry as pondicherry isn't it okay next one one more person that is duplex all right so duplex he uh, came to india as the governor general of the french people and write it so it is duplex so he came to india as the governor general of the french he wanted to uh, establish one very strong power in the south india again listen the uh, french people are also interested in the south india again first they wanted to capture the south india later on they wanted to go for the northern parts of the india but their first concentration whether it was portuguese whether it was dutch english whoever it was they reached the south india hence they first wanted to conquer the south india and then move on to the northern parts of the india all right so what duplex did was so he came to india as the uh, governor general of the french as governor general of he came to india as governor general of french and he wanted to establish one supremacy or a strong power in the south india which led to many wars which we uh, popularly call them as the carnatic wars with the english so when he came to the india with the ambition of uh, uh, having a supremacy there so there was a competition between these english people and the french people so there were many wars between english and french people so we'll write it governor general of french wanted to wanted to establish establish supremacy supremacy over trade over trade and this led to many wars between the french and english so this led to many and those wars were called as the carnatic wars many french and english all right so this is about the french people so french english portuguese and dutch we have seen all right so next we will move on to the different carnatic wars or important carnatic wars okay